Hi, welcome to the video. My name is Zychronic and today we're talking about the Destiny 2 Weekly Reset for May 24th, 2022. And of course, the season of the Haunted? If you don't know, season 17 has started and season of the Haunted has begun. So you have 91 days. <laughs> chop chop, get to it. Either way, there's a whole bunch of new stuff to do. Obviously, they've actually changed some of the, the UI here. I don't really know why. Uh, but obviously, there's the Leviathan, and the Moon's Haunted, and then the Ghost stuff, woo, and the Castellum. Uh, basically, when you start the game, it'll launch you right into a mission that's very spoopy, pretty easy, um, but just starts the story. Furthermore, the Helm also has a few new additions. First of all, you can pick up the Legacy Artifact, which allows you to keep getting Psychogenic Intel. Like I said before, the seasonal stuff does not go away at the end of the season. A lot of this stuff is going to stick around for at least a full year. And of course, we have the new Crown of Sorrow section. So I'm not going to spoil too much going on here. Essentially, again... The moon's haunted, and uh, this is where the new vendor for the mission is. Instead of it being the war table, it's over here. I have already done that first mission, so I have actually gotten the artifact, which is basically just do that first mission and then talk to that vendor. It's pretty straightforward. And on top of that, I also just wanted to mention, if you go over here to the triumph section and the pattern and catalyst, you'll actually see a lot of the new weapons. In fact, all of the new weapons at that vendor are, in fact, at the shaping so once you get enough L stringers for example you can craft an L stringer and i'm very excited to actually go and look at the different possible roles all this stuff has and of course create all the different things that uh, are available in the new stuff also um why is my class item gold i thought titans got like second or third place why is it gold <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining, but like... Furthermore, in case you wanted to take a look at the artifact, this is what it looks like. Seems we have barrier in the form of pulse rifle and sidearms this season. Overload is still gonna be SMGs and auto rifles. And the unstop is gonna be scout rifles and glaive. Don't give us another glaive unstop. Come on. Oh, actually, we have a... We have overload trace rifles because divinity isn't already a trace rifle. <laughs> Furthermore, it seems like we have a focus on trace rifles, shotguns, pulse rifles, and sidearms within the artifact with one extra little bit of glaive stuff on top of that. So basically just this stuff. So I've taken a look at the different uh, artifact mods within this column 4 and 5, and a lot of it has to do with the solar 3.0 base subclass, a lot of ignite stuff, and honestly, it seems like Sunshot is going to be an amazing weapon if only it had a potential for hand cannon mods in the artifact. Uh, but yeah, we got like basically a dragonfly thing. We've got some healing stuff going on or the power for radiant things Solar final blows a, a lot of different stuff that have to do with solar abilities like weakening champions And I guess it could definitely work But obviously it takes a little while to theory craft and build craft some of these things with the new solar 3.0 So I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on that Oh, I didn't want to do that <laughs> Damn it Right, so moving on, let's go ahead and take a look at the regular weekly reset. First up for the Nightfall today, we have the Proving Grounds. Obviously, somewhat of a more difficult Nightfall. Although, if you haven't noticed already, the increase of power is only by 10 levels. So if you had pretty much max level last season, you could probably do a Legend right off the bat and be just fine. And when it comes to 100k, uh, Legend seems like a fine fit. And currently, I do not know what the uh, Nightfall Unique is, because usually when they do these resets and the patches, the third-party apps don't know what it's going to be because they haven't received that information yet. So if you know what the Nightfall Unique is, let me know in the comments down below. And the Vanguard burn this week is going to be Arc Singe. The Rotating Crucible playlist is going to be Momentum Control. The Vault of Glass challenge is going to be Ensemble's Refrain, taking place in the final boss encounter. And in this encounter, anytime you destroy oracles, you can only destroy one oracle per person per phase. For the Vow of Disciple raid challenge, we have base information. By the way, Vow of Disciple is still a pinnacle reward. I forget when they said they're going to rotate between the raids, but at the moment, it's the pinnacle. The base information, I believe, takes place in the second, yeah, the second encounter. This is the one with the, uh, the, the library, and you have to get basically one buff at a time when you're running into the darkness area. Moving on, let's go ahead and take a look at Ever versus Inventory. Ooh, what is this? I guess this is... That's kind of odd, actually. Uh, I guess this is the current Eververse set for the Titan, and obviously the other two might be uh, right here. Yeah, uh, no, these are different. Okay, well, I'm on my Titan right now, so I see my Titan. I guess if you're on a different character, you'll see your character. Either way, let's take a look at the different bright... Oh my god! <laughs> He's adorable! He's a ship captain right there! That's yes, captain! Yes, my captain! Anyways, the bright dust options first of all we have the bright cyclone shell a little bit see-through uh latest 
Uh, if you have a dropped call, you basically drop the phone, probably. You have a ghost rejection, and of course, we have the Tyrian Abyss, which is a new shader for this season. Ooh, that's a purple going on here, even though clearly there's no purple in the image. I hate when it does that. Uh, for the other Bright Dust section, first of all, we have a sour taste, where you basically just put your hand there, and then you end the emote, you push the books off the side. You're like a cat. Uh, we have the Big Cheese, which is literally a giant thing of cheese, or a little piece of cheese, and a giant container, and... I don't know the point of this. I don't know if it's probably a reference. I don't know. Simulation Shell uh, comes from the Season of the Dawn. We have the Out of Dodge, which has a green thing on the back. I would not have expected that. We have the Flying Fortress, which is a sparrow, or a ship that we've seen for quite some time. We have an ornament for the Lord of Wolves that makes it look very rustic. We have a Ghost Projection. We have a Transmit Effect called the Warsat Arrival. We have another Transmit Effect, the Reboot, looks like that. We have the Fallen Arrival, which looks like this. And of course, we have a bunch of different shaders, which we have seen before, which obviously, again, keep in mind that I'm on my Titan, and the Titan will color very differently than your characters, uh, depending on what kind of metallic versus fabric you have on your character. And of course, make sure you keep in mind that there is a seasonal section, 10 ranks. Oh yeah, I saw this. You could buy 10 ranks at a time in the season. I think maybe once per character per, or per, per class or something. Either way, this section obviously is the silver section. You can take a look at the different possible available items that will be available at some point during the season if you want to get like a head start and be like, what am I looking for? Wow, these things are, these things are lit, fam. Uh, and there's a lot of different things. Again, there's the Titan set here, which looks dope, and I'm assuming that the Hunter and the Warlock ones will be there if you're on them. There's also a charity item, very specifically with the Doggo. Oh, look at it. He's so cute. Although, I would have expected um, wolves to be bigger. Wolves are, like, huge. Like, absolutely massive compared to us. We have an ornament for the Burning Steps. The No Backup Plans gets an ornament. Uh, oh, this is a this is a universal ornament for the class item. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what this is. Sweet business, Huckleberry, Black Town. Oh, that looks nice. We got an ornament for Arbalest. Finally, getting a potentially clean looking ornament for Arbalest. The other one just kind of looks like it's fat. Uh, a couple ornaments across some other weaponry. I don't think I've used Aegir Scepter in quite some time, but it's there if you want to get a look at it. Obviously, a different uh, taunts and whatnot. And of course, we obviously have the Season of the Haunted Season Pass, which obviously there are a lot of different things. I'm not going to go over every single different one of them, but I will remind you there are a number of different bonuses across the bottom that you get throughout. Of course, if you're on the free track, if you want to get the Trespasser, it is still at rank 35, and there's a bunch of stuff along the way. There's going to be some weapons that you can craft later on. There's some ornaments, or there's some armor, which is still still a high total stats. If you don't know, anywhere from 57 to 87 is going to be a high total stat set of armor. It's obviously going to be some ornaments along the way, but all the way to 85 or 87, you'll have different options for high stat armor, which is going to be very important because that's the high stat armor. If you don't have it, you can get some. Of course, at the very end, we have an ornament for the one false step, which which actually looks kind of cool. And of course, along the way, we have this ornament set, which has a skull across all the characters. They have these cool little skulls. Ooh, this nice little smoke effect coming out of it. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to it. The trailer made, trailer made it look cool, so I'm, I'm excited. Also, in case you didn't know, the new Season Pass item here is a sidearm. It seems like it's a three-burst sidearm, where reloading after defeating a target causes the next burst to be a longer, more powerful super burst. And whenever you actually get a final blow with that super burst, it automatically reloads your weapon and provides another super burst, which I assume is basically another way of saying just bow, 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 bow. Translate. <laughs> As you probably know if you watch my channel for a while, I really like three burst sidearms and they made an exotic form which probably has some pretty good stats with it and this super burst might be a lot of fun. But we'll have to see, I still don't think it's going to be much of a meta, at least in PvE. Uh, Bungie? Uh, <laughs> yeah, does anybody notice what's wrong here? Bungie, I can't help but notice that the, the this energy weapon is facing towards the top left, it should be facing towards the top right. If you don't know, energy weapons will always face towards the top right, and kinetic weapons and stasis will always face towards the top left. Uh, obviously, except for these ones in the heavy slot. Gunsmith. Um, you're not holding a weapon right now. You wanna... You wanna talk about the weapon you're not holding? Oh, he's got a Telesto now! Interesting choice. What's... Why Why does he have a Telesto in his hand? I, there's a Telesto in front... 
So that was weird, it wasn't loaded in. But anyways, you go to the gunsmith, you obviously get the quest uh, for the artifact for the weapon, which I'll never get because it probably requires some crucible at some point. But let's take a look at the different uh, gunsmith options for weapons today, which she actually has a new weapon, which I'm very much looking forward to. First up, we have the single patient, which is a steady hands headstone. Headstone, probably one of my favorite things to have on this particular kind of weapon, although it comes at level one, I believe, so you can get it pretty quickly. We have Ricochet Rounds Light Mag. We have Hammer Forge with a Range Masterwork. I'd probably say this is probably one of the better rolls you can have on it outside of, obviously, the Enhanced Roll. So if you like a good 390 Pulse Rifle, I would recommend this one. Following that, we have the Nutella. The, well, I'll call this the Nutella, uh, which is a Combat Bow, a lightweight frame for the Kinetic Slot with Range Finder Head Seeker, or Headstone. Sorry, this is the one with the Stasis Crystal. It has fiberglass shaft. Either way, this is an excellent roll. Like, rangefinder is pretty nice to have on this, although maybe not as much on bows. Headseeker, headstone is really nice. I would recommend that. Uh, following that, the Snorri FR5, which has surplus frenzy, not a bad combination. Has range matched work, has accelerated coils, and extended barrel. Not a bad combo, though I don't think it's the best. We have a funnel web, which is auto loading uh, adrenaline junkie. I personally like having frenzy on this. If you can get frenzy, it's much better, and you definitely like a bit more ranged up. Following that, Memory Interdict, which has Unrelenting with Underdog. Does have Spike Grenades, but does not have any other damage perks, so I'm not a big fan of it. And finally, we have the Typhon GL5, which is going to be a stats for all explosive light with Spike Grenades and a Velocity with Volatile Launch. Not a bad combination. Honestly, probably one of the better combinations you could possibly have with this weapon, so I would recommend this version. Banshee, you are supposed to be a gunsmith. You are not supposed to be a ghost smith. Why are you holding nothing right now? This is ridiculous. This, it's, it, it's haunted. It's haunted. <laughs> Even the gunsmith's like, oh, my guns are haunted. Gunsmith, you're just not holding it. It's haunted, I say. It's haunted. It's haunted. And of course, if you don't know, right after these reset videos, I do live stream right here on YouTube. Oftentimes, open lobbies for the seasonal stuff, the race stuff, and all that whatnot. So come check it out. And of course, a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Specifically, a big thank you to Mom and Dad, Chris Thompson, Kellen, Austrack, Jacob Burke, Monday, Two Boxers, Unipanther, Casey Reagan, Father Support on Patreon. That's it. Hope you guys enjoy. My name's Arcana, and I'll see you guys on the next one.